right, so let's talk about fissure projections. So a fissure projection is another way to look at a molecule. So remember with Newman projections, we were looking down a carbon-carbon bond. Well now, with a fissure projection, instead of looking down a carbon-carbon bond, we're going to imagine that we're laying on top of the molecule. So if the molecule is on this board, uh, I'm kind of laying over here, staring straight down on it. Um, so uh, when you've got a fissure projection, just two things to keep in mind. The horizontal lines uh, are wedges, so they're kind of popping out. And then the vertical lines are dashes. So they're going into the plane of the board. And everywhere that you have an intersection of a, of a horizontal and vertical line, that's a chiral center. So. so it does make it uh, a lot easier to notice the chiral centers, especially when you have to go into sign house of configuration. Um, so really common questions that will be asked on the test will be to convert a fissure projection to a line angle formula or convert it from a line angle formula to a fissure. Um, and so when, to do this, the most difficult thing is just getting the stereochemistry right. Um, so we'll go over the process to convert from fissure to uh, line angle. Oops, that's line, not line, sorry. Okay, so we've got four steps. So we're going to start by numbering the carbons. Then we'll go ahead and determine the absolute configuration on all the chiral center. Then we will sketch the line angle formula. Uh, and we're going to have to guess on the stereochemistry. So my recommendation is to draw everything on a dash, draw all the substituents on a dash. And the reason being is that way when you're assigning absolute configuration to check, then you, you don't have to worry about reversing it. Um, but that's just a personal preference. Oh, I'm sorry, on a wedge, not dash. My fault. Um, and then, so fourth, you will just determine the absolute configuration of the line angle formula. Of, of chiral centers on the line angle formula, rather. Uh, and then change if necessary. So if you had something, so the key is you want to have everything on the fissure that was R, be R on the line angle, everything that was S on the fissure, be S on the line angle. So if you've drawn a fissure and you have something that, if you've drawn the line angle and you have something that's R, well, to get it to S, you just flip it from a wedge to a dash. Um, and we're going to do an example to kind of make that sink in um, and uh, correct if necessary. Okay. Okay. So we've got this molecule. All right. So start. So first step, number the carbons. Alright, so we've got five. Um, so now we've got to determine the absolute configuration. So remember in a fissure, all the intersections are chiral centers. So we've got two absolute configurations to assign. So carbon two. So I'm just going to zoom in on that. Um, so to assign absolute configuration for a fissure, you draw one horizontal line as a wedge and one vertical line as a dash. All right, so we've got our freebie. The O is the one, the hydrogen is the four. And then we've got these two carbons that we're comparing. So we have CH3 and then COCH. These carbons are the same. 
This O is the higher priority. So our 2 goes down here. 3 goes right there. Uh, I'll redraw this uh, just to make it a little more clear with just numbers. Oh, let me lower it. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3. So this is clockwise, but the four is the fourth priority group is not on dash is not on a uh, is not on a dash. So it is S. All right, and just so we can kind of keep track of what we're doing, I'll label this as S in red up here. Okay, so then let's move over here to the third carbon and get the absolute configuration for that. Um, so let's see here, we'll do the same thing. And uh, I, I'll, I just keep it consistent. I always keep the, the line to the right, I put that on the wedge in the line that's going, uh, that's um, down here. I always put that on a dash. Um, I just like to stay consistent. Okay. So you see we've got, got our freebies as usual, one and four. Just comes down to this, these two carbons, see which one is the higher priority. C-O-C-H for this top carbon, for the bottom carbon, C-H-H. -H. Those are the same. This O, first point of difference. This will be our highest priority. So again, I'll just redraw this for clarity with just numbers. Okay. Well, notice this time it's counterclockwise, um, but four is not, again, four is not on the uh, dash. So it is R. So I'll move that up here, or I'll write that up here in our Fisher projection. Okay. So. That's step two. On to step three. Draw the line or sketch a line angle formula, and I draw all my substituents on a wedge. So this kind. Of, so we've got five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and I'll number them. So my chiral centers were two and three, and I draw my OHs on wedges. And again, this is just a guess. And I've got, we've got to do the absolute configuration again to see if this is correct because we, we need the stereochemistry on this Fisher projection to match up with the stereochemistry on the line angle. So 2 must be S and center 3 must be R. Um, if not, all we have to do is change this from wedge to a dash because inverting that group will cause the reversal of absolute configuration. So we're back to the same story here with C2. Uh, and you can also draw on these hydrogens. So again, I'm just going to draw in right away the 4 and 1 just to save a little time on the absolute configuration here because the OH is 1, the hydrogen is 4. Down here we have a CH3 and over here we have a C. Well, this is connected to the OH. So this, over, this group over here is going to take our number 2 priority. And this will take our number 3. So again, I'm just doing absolute configuration just a little bit quicker here. So we've got one, two, three. Well, that's clockwise, and our four is indeed on a dash, so this is going to be R. All right, well, that's not good because we need this to be S. We need center two to be S, so we'll have to change that. So I'll write this as R, but I'm also going to circle the center to remind me that I need to change that. Um, so let's also check on C3 over here. So over here we've got carbon, um, this is bonded to, well, 
I'm just going to cheat a little bit here. We know this is this is bonded to an OH, and this is just bonded to carbons and hydrogens. So this guy over here is going to take our number two priority. Uh, and we also know this will be one, this will be four, this guy over here will be three. So let's see what we have here. Well, this is again clockwise. Um, and the four is the lowest priority. The four is indeed on a wet or on a dash, I'm sorry. So this will be R. Well, this is good because as we saw in our Fisher projection, uh, the center number three was R. So we're good to go. We don't need to do anything there. So um, all we have to do now is just draw this molecule again, but flip the chiral center. And that will leave us with There, and then you can double check the absolute configuration if you're not sure, um, or you know, if you want to be 100% certain. But there you go. So, this Fisher projection is equivalent to this line angle formula. Um, so, if the question asked you to go from a line angle formula to a Fisher projection, you do this same process, but in but instead of where it says line angle formula, just replace that with Fisher projection. You would still number the carbons still determine the absolute configuration on the chiral centers. Then you would just sketch out the Fisher projection. Uh, again, number the carbons. Then you would just arbitrarily place the substituents on, you know, on either the right or left. Do the absolute configuration on the Fisher projection. And then if it's not correct, you just flip two groups. And then you're good to go. All right. Uh, thanks, guys.